Hello and welcome back to another indie book review and I am super excited for this one. This time I am reviewing Nightmare Arcanist by Shami Stovall. I have been a huge fan of hers ever since I read Starmark Rising. I reviewed it back in January I believe and I will have that link down below if you want to check that one out. But I am already pretty much in love with her. She's already one of my favorite authors and I can already see the the markings of her writing style in this book as well. Now this is a YA flintlock fantasy. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, flintlock fantasy is fantasy in the time of the mid to late 19th century during the time of flintlock pistols and such. Um, this book, it didn't totally scream flintlock to me. I didn't get so, so much of that era, um, but it didn't take anything away from it. This follows a young boy named Volk, who has only recently become a man in his culture's opinion at the age of 15, and he is desperate to prove himself. Born the son of two criminals, everyone kind of assumes he'll be nothing, and he's given the job as a grave digger because it is considered a dirty job that no one wants. However, Volk has dreams of being an arcanist. Now, in this world, arcanists are always revered as the only magic users in anywhere, and they get their magic by being bonded to an Eldrin, and an Eldrin is pretty much any mythical creature you could think of. Dragons, pixies, unicorns, and some you probably haven't heard of, like, for example, I never knew what a Rizzle was before this. Um, I think my personal favorite was uh, the girl that was bonded to a Hydra, because when they're first bonded, most of the time, the Eldrin is still fairly young, so the girl was bonded to this little baby Hydra. And I know the book said that the Hydra wasn't cute, but, like, in my mind, the Hydra was cute, and that's my headcanon. But anyway, uh... Volk is desperate to become as big and famous and as masterful an arcanist as his hero, Gregory Ruma. I speak good. And he pretty much is willing to do anything to get it. He majorly fails at uh, trying to get it at Phoenix. And that's not a spoiler. You know by the title what, what kind of arcanist he's going to be. And he's not a, it isn't a Phoenix arcanist. Uh, so he, be, he majorly fails at that, and the way he fails is a little bit heartbreaking. But when he discovers that some Eldrin have been let loose on that little island he calls home, he and his adopted sister Ilya decide to chase after them. And he ends up bonded to what is called a nightmare. Now, if you don't know, a nightmare is basically like a walking, talking suit of armor made of shadows. Uh, and I really don't know how to explain it any more than that. But this night, uh, nightmare, Luther, uh, is really hesitant about bonding with Volk and says he only will if Volk swears that he will help him find his Arcanist's murderer. Now, here's what I'm going to caution you. Most of the time, I like going into a book knowing as much about it as possible from the synopsis and such. I am going to task you not to read the synopsis because the synopsis ruins the surprise reveal of who the murderer was because they don't figure it out in the book to like 150 pages in and I really wish that I'd known that like that I hadn't known that rather I really wish that that had been the big reveal to me rather than being like oh this is where they're revealing it so I charge you with not reading the synopsis and going in blind so that you get the full extent of what that reveal is now this reveal is very difficult for Volk uh, because he's not sure how to go through with it and he doesn't really want to fight him or do anything about it and he doesn't have the ability to. Um, he is what's called second bonded, which means essentially that because his Eldrin already had another Arcanist and isn't at the beginning of its life, learning magic is going to be harder for him because it's basically magic that was originally meant for someone else. Uh, the underdog quality there is strong and that, like I said, that is one of Shami Stovall's markers, I would say, and, and truly earnest underdog protagonist that has a very clear goal in mind and really wants the thing. Um, however, he's even when he gets the thing, it's not quite what he wanted it to be. Now, he and a couple other Arcanists travel to join a guild because it's the only way to get trained to be an Arcanist. And things kind of go from there with him trying to fight back and decide what should he do about this Arcanist he knows that's been killing other Arcanists. And what about this strange plague that's been going around and turning Eldrin and their Arcanists crazy? Um, I really liked the plague and what it did 
to the Eldrin because it was such a big threat. And once you see one of the Eldrin that is infected with the plague, you're like, oh, that's a special kind of insane. Um, and it makes them manic and crazy and bloodthirsty. And I loved it because <laughs> that's the kind of stuff I love. Now, the one thing I wish had begun a little sooner, but I understand why I couldn't, was um, I am trash, as the kids say, for uh, groups, for found family type situations. And like halfway or later through the book, um, you see Volk starting to bond with the other arcanists that he's training with. Um, and see all of the differences in their Eldrin and what they can do and all the training sessions were a lot of fun to read about. Uh, even the characters that are basically jerks to him in certain ways were, were fun to read and learn about. Um, but I just wish I started a little, little bit sooner. Um, let me look at my notes here. Ooh, yes. Okay. Probably my favorite part. And again, another marker of Shami Stovall's writing was the ending. Now, the ending of Starmark Rising was literally explosive, uh, like explosions in space, which I loved. And this one also had a very, very big ending. Now, obviously, I can't tell you it because I don't want to ruin it. Uh, but like we're talking like buildings toppling big and it was a lot of fun and it was creepy in certain aspects but in a good way and it just it felt like properly big for the setup it had uh, you know a lot of times you've ever seen books where they have this all the setup and build up and then like the plot is solved with a conversation or the plot is solved off screen so to speak and you just pop in a couple time skips later and suddenly everything's fine again. No, this is big and important and bombastic and I loved it. Um, I also loved that he, uh, it takes a whole group to, to bring about the ending and it, it's a group effort. It's not just him being like, aha, I am the protagonist. I shall solve all the things. Um, which I love that as well, just in general. I had a lot of high hopes for this book, and a lot of me was worried that maybe it was hyping up too bit too much. What was I even saying there? I'm not the biggest fan of YA in general. However, this was probably the best YA I've read in a hot minute because it's YA that actually felt like YA. Um, in a lot of cases, YA can feel like basically adults, they're just not legally able to vote yet if that makes any sense, where, like, the characters are thinking and acting way more mature than they should be. But no, this is a brash, overly earnest 15-year-old, and I believe his... Yes, Ilya is 15 as well. So these are brash, overly earnest, we can save the world, but also kind of doing stupid things along the way. Teenagers, which I truly, truly loved. Um, I'm not saying this has made me a fan of YA in general, but I will definitely be continuing with this series. I'm definitely eager to see how they plan on stopping this plague that is infecting everything. Um, it definitely feels like a big enough problem to warrant a series. Um, like, you definitely know the threat they're going to be facing, and it feels big enough. So I will definitely be continuing with that and there's a lot of other things that I could be saying right now, but I have to hold them in because they're all spoilers. But remember, if you're interested in reading this book, please, please, please do so blindly. Don't look at the synopsis. And I know that sounds weird, but don't because that's still that's aggravating to me because that reveal would have been so good and so awesome if it had been done only in the book, if it hadn't been revealed on the back. So read it blind if you're going to read it, please. Almost forgot. Uh, this is being published June 18th. Might want to say that. Uh, so please, please pick it up June 18th. I know the first day of publishing is always the, the trickiest and always the one that they want to get the most sales on. So check it out blindly. Don't look at the synopsis. Don't do it. Go into the blind. Have the, all the sweetness of that reveal. <laughs> But anyway, if you're interested in more indie reviews, uh, please subscribe, uh, leave a comment saying if you would read this book or not, or if you read books blind generally, or if you always have to know the synopsis like me. 
Uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and a marvelous tomorrow.